Welcome back folks and welcome to another 4am production. Now today we're going to go and do another in-depth discussion uh, about our modifiers and today it's going to be the mesh cache modifier. Now unfortunately this is going to be another one like the data transfer. Uh, this is one that I haven't used at all and from reading the script um, it is used with animation so unfortunately i don't know a lot about animation so it's not going to be something that i'm going to be able to show you exactly how it works let's get this out of the way a second um but what i'm going to do is just like the um just like the other modifier uh, data transfer i forgot the name of it then just like the data transfer modifier i'm going to go through and tell you exactly what everything does on it uh, tell you what this modifier is about and then at a later date when i can actually use the modifier on something then I'll recreate the video and do it again. As I said to you in the, in the introduction, you know, these modifiers here, you're probably not going to use at all, but I thought I'd do this, um, these videos just to give you a bit of information about it all. Uh, the only ones that you're really going to use are the generate. Um, you can use the deform, which I see a lot of people doing, um, especially with displays for textures, and the simulate is all for animation. Um, so, yeah, modify. Um, our modifier one's going to be first, then generate, then deform, and then maybe when I use simulate, I'll be able to come back to the modify meshes, uh, modify modifiers. So, yep. So, without further ado, the mesh cache modifier. The mesh cache modifier is used so animated mesh data can be applied to a mesh and played back, deforming the mesh. Now, to me, I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that. Um, why play it back and deform the mesh? I'd I don't get that, I don't know why you do that, but you know, it could come in handy, um, could come in hand, and it might be useful. This works in a similar way to shape keys, and again, shape keys is going to be one of them things that I'm going to do um, a complete tutorial about and learn that part myself because I'm not too familiar with that myself. Um, I mean, I, I might be, I just don't know what the shape keys are. Um, we might have used them, I don't know. But it is aimed at playing back external files and is often used for interchange between applications. When using this modifier, the vertex locations are overwritten. So obviously because you're playing it back and you're deforming the mesh, um, the vertex is going to be in different locations. So it's going to completely overwrite where your original um, vertex were for your original animation mesh. Okay, so we go through format at the input file format, and that's currently available on MDD and PC2. They're the only two that are supported. And I'm not quite sure how you get those files at the moment. I have looked at um, on exporting, but there's no MDD and there's no PC2. So as always, you know, if you know what they are. Um, leave a comment and you'll be able to help me out there and I can look into that a little bit further but right now I'm just going to go through what everything is what all these buttons do um, the file path is the path to the cache file so you click on there and then you go straight to your file uh, oops okay so next we've got the evaluation this little guy here and these are all the buttons for evaluation so you have influence that's the factor to adjust sorry the factor to adjust the influence of the modifiers deformation useful for blending in and out from the cache data so with normal factors depending on what you set that factor to depends on how much the deform is going to affect your animation so if you set it sort of ridiculous, it's going to be completely deformed. You might it might be minimal because you just want a little deformation in it. Okay, and then you've got deform mode. So this setting defaults to overwrite, which will replace the vertex locations with those in the cache file. So there's your overwrite there, and that overwrites the complete mesh of your vertex. However, you may want to use shape keys, for example, and mix them with the mesh cache. In this case, you can select the deform option, 
um, deform option which integrates deformations with the mesh cache, cache result. So if you wanted to use the shape keys plus mesh cache, then you'd use integrate. That's what I get from that anyway. If you use overwrite, it's just going to be what's inside this modifier that's going to overwrite. This feature is limited to making smaller isolated edits and will not work for larger changes such as reposing limbs. Okay, so if it's going to be a big part of your mesh that you're changing, you'd use overwrite. It's going to be small parts like maybe finger movements, then you'd use the deform with the shape keys. Then we have interpolation. It's that word again that I hate. You have non or linear, which will blend between frames. Use linear when the frames in the cache file do not match up exactly with the frames in the blend file. Okay, again I'm going to leave that out. Um, not a lot to say about that one. Next you have time mapping. You have time mode. Select how time is calculated. You have frame mode. Um, hang on, let me just have a bit of one second. Good time. Right, okay, so these are all the time modes, sorry. You then have frame, which allows you to control the frames, which will ignore timing data in the file, but is often useful since it gives simple control. So by this one, you just, you just adjust by your frames, and you can literally just use that to move along the frames. So that one would be useful using this key along with it, which is the current frame key. Next, you have the time, which evaluates time in seconds, taking into account timing information for the file, offset, and the frame times. So if you were going to adjust it by time, then this is going to take into account the offsets of how long it takes the modifier and this to and your mesh to actually account for both of them. You then have a factor, and that evaluates the entire animation as a value from 0 to 1. That to me would probably be the hardest one to use because you've got such a small amount to adjust between 0 and 1. Uh, that, that's how I'm interpreting, interpreting that and I think that would probably be the hardest one. Okay, then you have your play mode, which are these two here. Well, this whole section here even. Play mode, select how playback operates. So you have scene, which use the current frame from the scene to control playback. So your scene is linked to these. You have frame start, play the cache starting from this frame. So if you set this to 1, that's going to start from from frame 1 down here, which is frame 1 there, and then it's going to finish, I believe it would be that one, nope, frame scale is scale time by this factor applied after the start value. So I think that would be, if you do that to 10, that would then last out 10 frame scales. I think that's how that would work. It's evaluation in second time in seconds, so that would be 10 seconds. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how that would work. Next, you have custom. So control animation timing manually. But this is probably the uh, the expert side of it. Again, as is factor. Um, that's how you would. These two are probably for the experts. These two, beginners. You have then evaluation factor. Property used for animation time. This gives more control of timing. Typically this value will be animated. Well, I think the whole thing would be animated considering that you need, that you can only use this modifier with an animation. So that script's probably a named, um, where's the little wrong there? Okay, then we have our axis mapping, which is the forward and up axis. This axis for forward and up used in the source file. Again, you know, that might be for moving up, moving up the scales, moving down um, along the whole grid. Could not tell you on that. 
you then have your flip axis. In their cases, you may also need to flip the coordinates on an axis. So, I mean, that, that could be for flipping the action animation around, for getting them to walk. But if you're, let's say your animation was going forward here, if you then flipped along the X, that would then bring your animation back this way. But then to me, that kind of eliminates the whole point of this because then the whole point of this modifier is to make it go backwards, which would suggest to me that he doesn't turn around, he literally walks backwards, sort of like a Michael Jackson moonwalk. That's what I'd figure from that. Um, but again, as I say, you know, if anyone else knows a bit more about this modifier than I do, and as you can tell, I don't know a lot about this. I'm literally just doing these videos just to give you a bit of information about every single modifier in there and what every button does. Um, you know, if you know a bit more about this, leave a comment below and you know help me out and help everybody else as well because that'd be really appreciated. And later on, as I'm going through this, and you know, I start using a lot more like normals and animations and stuff like that. And I think animations probably gonna be one of the last things that I'm gonna use. But once I start using that, I can then come back through and I can redo these videos, uh, present them a lot better, and do a lot more with them. Right now, I'm just trying to learn. So I do apologise for anybody that, you know, thinks, my God, this guy's an idiot, he doesn't know anything about these, why is he doing these videos? The reason I'm doing them is to try and help everybody else, and myself. Okay, so a little tip is, both MDD and PC2 depend on vertex order on the mesh remaining unchanged. So that would be your original mesh. This is a limitation with the method used so take care not to add or remove vertices once the modifier is used. Okay, so if your mesh is, let's say a format MDD, this is me just taking a shot in the dark, and you've applied it, if you remove your vertices after you've applied this, then I don't think this modifier will actually affect that vertice. Um, and that's going to be pretty much it on that mesh cache modifier because that's the script that I have here. Um, so that's all I can stick to. As I say, I can't really show you how it works or anything. I have played around with it uh, just by using the simple square and doing a little animation with this, but you know, it doesn't seem to be doing much for me. So, um, yeah, that will be it for now. And then we're going to go on to the normal edit next. And, you know, who knows, we might learn a bit more about that one. I might be able to use that one a little bit better and show you exactly how it works. In the worst case, all these videos are going to be the same. It's going to be me. I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm just going to be reading through of exactly what that modifier does and what each button does. But, yeah, once again, leave a comment, like, subscribe. There's going to be plenty of videos to come along. Um, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you.